Hey class, this is lesson 3-7, Absolute Value Equations and Inequalities. Uh, you will learn to solve equations and inequalities involving absolute values. Uh, so, write true or false for each of these to indicate the absolute value of negative 8 and right with lines on the sides. Negative 8, that's true. The absolute value of negative 8 is negative 8, since negative 8 is 8 units to the left of 0 on the number line. That is false. The absolute value of negative 8 is positive 8, because uh, negative 8 is 8 units away from 0 on the number line. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8, since negative 8 is 8 units from 0 on the number line. That's true. Seems like I just said that. Uh, according to the definition of absolute value, if the absolute value of r is equal to 3, then r is equal to 3, or r is equal to negative 3. That is true. Uh, if the absolute value of 3 is 3, and so is the absolute value of negative 3. Okay? Alright, uh, the vocabulary word is expression. An expression is a word or phrase that communicates an idea. A mathematical expression is a mathematical phrase. It does not have an equal sign. So we're going to write an expression for each word phrase. Uh, M increased by 8. Increased would be adding. Y divided by 9. I like using a slash for divide. I would prefer to write it this way. Y divided by 9. U more than 7. That would be adding u to 7. Uh, cross out the expression that is not algebraic. Uh, algebraic expressions have variables, so that middle one is actually just a mathematical expression, not an algebraic expression. Cross out the expression that is not numeric. The numeric expression expressions have no variables, so that expression is not numeric. All right, I remember we'll do this problem. Class? All right, we're going to solve some equations, equations involving absolute values. What are the solutions of the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 7? We're going to graph the solution. Um, we're going to solve these really the same way we solve equations. All right, so um, we're going to try and isolate the absolute value, this part here, and then it's going to be easier to solve. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is use the subtraction property of equality to subtract 3 from both sides. When I do that, I now have the new equation that says the absolute value of x equals 4. Now, what I'm essentially saying here, when I say the absolute value of x, I'm saying um, x units from 0. So numbers that are x units from 0. And there are two numbers that are x units that are 4 units from 0. Those two numbers are negative 4 and positive 4. And you can see that on the number line, the way I graph that. So x equals 4 or x All right. In the got it problem, we have the absolute value of n minus 5 equals negative 2. Uh, circle what you should do to solve it. Isolate the variable including the absolute value. All right, we want to do that. To do that, we're going to add 5 to both sides. Then we are going to simplify and we get absolute value of n equals 3. And now we can see that there are two numbers that are 3 units from 0. That is the number 3 and 4, the number negative 3. And then graph those solutions. We'll fill in these numbers. And negative 3 is halfway between negative 2 and negative 4. And 3 is halfway between 2 and 4. Now to check the solutions of the equation, we just have to substitute our two answers into the original equation, which was the absolute value of n minus 5 equals negative 2. 
absolute value of 3 is positive 3 minus 5 equals negative 2. That's true. So that checks. And our other solution is negative 3, so we're going to do the absolute value of negative 3 minus 5. If that equals negative 2. And the absolute value of negative 3 is 3 minus 5 is equal to negative 2. That's also true. So both these solutions work. To solve an equation of the form absolute value of a equals b, where a represents variable of expression and b is greater than zero, solve a equals b and a equals the opposite of b. And the reason that is is because when you have an absolute value, there's actually two numbers that are that distance from zero. Um, there's one to the left of zero and one to the right of zero. So to solve the absolute value of b equals 3, we want to solve b equals 3 and b equals negative 3. To solve the absolute value of x minus 5 equals 6, we're going to solve x minus 5 equals 6 and x minus 5 equals negative 6. To solve uh, the absolute value of h plus 7 equals 2h, we're going to solve h plus 7 equals 2h and h plus 7 equals the opposite or negative 2h. So there's really two equations involved in an absolute, absolute value equation. All right. So, so in this problem, uh, your cousin was standing along the parade route when she spotted a float 750 from feet from her. The parade was traveling at 150 feet per minute. The distance d from your cousin is feet after t minutes is given by distance equals the absolute value of 750 minus 150. The reason we have an absolute value there is because the, the float could be coming towards her or going away from her. Um, so the distance could be a uh, positive or it could end up being a positive or negative number. If we use absolute value, that'll make it a positive number. At what time is the float 250, 200 feet from your cousin round to the nearest tenth? So we want to solve. We're going to substitute 200 into the equation for D. This absolute value equation. Okay, now from what you just remember, every absolute value equation actually has two parts to it. And, and it, in this problem, that relates to either the float being coming towards her or going away from her. So, in one way, um, one of those values we can represent as negative 200 and the other as positive 200. So we can solve the equation negative 200 equals 750 minus 158. And we can solve it at, as positive 200 equals 750 minus 158. So um, either way, I think we'll subtract 750 from both sides. Negative 950 equals negative 158. Then I'm going to divide negative 950 by negative 158. It's over here. Uh, negative 950 divided by negative 158. And that equal to about. Round it to the nearest tenth, about six seconds. We're going to write it at 6.0 minutes. We rounded it to the nearest tenth. Okay. All right. And the second equation, we subtract 750 from both sides. We get negative 550 equals to negative 158. So we're going to take negative 550 and divide it by negative 158. And we get T is, I should put an approximate sign in here, approximately 3.5 seconds. So we have two answers, uh, about six. 
seconds and about or a minute and about three and a half. We're going to pick the All right. So um, this absolute value equation has two possible answers. So the first thing we're going to do is write out the two equations. Got that? Second thing we're going to do is um, I think we'll add one to both sides of the equations, and we're doing the same thing for both of them. So we're using the addition property of equality. And the last step is divide both sides by three. That's how they came up with the answer. That's the division property of equality. And to check the solutions, we want to make sure that our solution 3 works, so we're going to take 3 times 3 minus 1, do the absolute value of that, and make sure it's equal to 8. Our other equation we're going to check is we're going to take 3 times negative 7 thirds minus 1, do the absolute value of that, make sure it's equal to 8. Uh, 3 times 3 minus 1 is 9 minus 1. And that's 8, and the absolute value of 8 is equal to 8. That checks. That's good. And 3 times negative 7 thirds is equal to negative 7 minus 1. Hope that equals 8. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. And the absolute value of negative 8 is 8. So that's good. They both check. All right. Solving an absolute value equation with no solution. So um, I guess we'll solve this first and you know, we'll kind of talk about why there's no solution for this problem. So uh, probably what you would attempt to do is subtract 6 from both sides at first. And then we would end up with 5 times the absolute value of the quantity 3x minus 1 equals negative 3. Remember, we're trying to isolate the absolute value part of it, so um, it would make sense to divide both sides by 5 here. And that gives us the absolute value isolated equals negative 3 fifths. You could write that as negative all right, now we have two absolute value inequalities to work with here. Um, but I think I'm going to stop right here, and I'm just going to think about this logically. We know that these absolute value symbols will turn any number that's inside will make it positive. And so I want that to be negative 3 fifths. Well, that's impossible because an absolute value, the distance from zero, will never be a negative number. So as soon as I end up with a negative number, uh, I'm going to say there is no solution. All right, so go ahead and try the next one. I'm going to pause the recording here because I'm going to have to do a second part to get the whole recording in.